got a little fluff on your lip. I wonder if you can see it in 4K. <laughs> okay. little, is, it is it there? A little poochy fur. No, you yeah. got it. You All totally right. got it. <laughs> what would I do without you? I don't know. That's what I'm here for. Uh, <laughs> what would I do without you? What would you do? Like, if I wasn't here... Uh, I won't make it gruesome like I died. Just like I just left. I'm just like, all right, I'm done with this. You just <laughs> bailed. I'm done. Too much ASMR. Too much video. Too much content. <laughs> I'm going to live by a river in Idaho. Oh my. Um, what's your like? Uh, I don't want to say dream scenario. Like you've thought about it so much, but what's your? Uh, how would you go about that? Like, like, do you start dating right away? What do you like? What are you looking for? Like, I'm gone. Like, what do you do? You're gone. It's so different. Okay, so it's in the not dating. Gruesome. I'm talking in the dating world, like like not what do you do? You've like, just like, like you've just bailed. So uh, yeah, I'm just I like yeah, I'm just like gone. We. I don't have to feel guilty about it. Yeah, there's no guilt. There's mm-hmm. just it, it, it's like a complete like split. I don't even want to say I died, like you know, because I don't want to put that. You know, I'll say that on a podcast, and then two started, weeks later, two weeks laughing. later, I died. I just started <laughs> yeah, laughing yeah. uncontrollably. People are like, <laughs> it was definitely Maddie. Yeah. If you watch her reaction, in <laughs> she definitely episode killed him. Seven, <laughs> she was gleeful. No, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> what if? Um, uh, uh, no, I I don't want it to be like I start talking about my death and then. There's like a documentary series like, you know, BuzzFeed puts it out like this small podcast. This guy talked about his death and what his wife would do to date other this men. Unknown and then podcaster. two weeks later, he died at the hands of a plumber. Done, done, done. <laughs> Who wanted to date his wife? <laughs> Who wants to date his wife? It's getting so dark. I don't like it. No, no. Okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. What like we just we, we split. Like guilt free, guilt free, like, yeah. All emotion, all emotions between us are out mm-hmm. of it. So I'm just trying to find out what single Maddie at your age is like, because that doesn't, you know, it doesn't Golly. exist. It doesn't process in my head. Like, yeah. W- um, I'll just give you two examples. Are you? W- would you be on Tinder, or would you be, uh, like looking for friends to maybe hook you up with a guy and then go slow. Like what, what, what avenue are you going? I feel we talk. And how quickly? How quickly? <laughs> Immediately, if not sooner. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about before um, that we feel like we missed the tender golden age um, and are probably better for it. But I think there's something. I'm not, but you <laughs> There's something beautiful about just like the current dick appointment era where <laughs> girls are just. What like, did you call it? <laughs> dick appointment. Yes, dick appointment. Where you Who's just got the schedule. appointment? The guy has a dick, or the girl has a dick appointment. Like it's her appointment to get dick. The girl has an appointment to get dick. That's pretty hot. And she, <laughs> but she just schedules in whatever random guy to fill her appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an entendre there that I'm? Catching up. Are you getting it? Yeah, I'm you're getting not. it. Um, so okay, so you're, you'd be Tinder, like if that's what you go for. Yes, I think so. But I would be so easy to please. I'm not sure that I'm made for Tinder <laughs> because I'm very like swipe right. Yep. I'm Is it a right? Like, Is it a right or a left? So I think it's right, just because when you like you somebody, see people doing that in pop culture, like you swipe right when you like somebody. I think Thing. Okay. Well, I think it's just right like, just kind of flows and then left is just kind of like fuck off. Eh. <laughs> like piss off. Piss off. <laughs> piss off. So, so you'd um, literally sw- swipe right on everybody. <laughs> oh, probably. Cute. We've like played this game before where you'll be like, do you find this person cute? And I'm like, well, I find their eyebrows to be cute. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you find this person attractive? Oh, well, you know, they just look like they'd be nice to have a picnic with and they just seem pleasant. So yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I could talk myself into every every single person, probably. Yeah, you don't really have, uh, um, like, there's no. I, I don't know what the 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 um the trait is, I guess, but you don't have like uh, like a guy could be short and you're cool. A guy could be tall and you're cool. A guy could have tons of hair. A guy could be bald, and there's there's no. 
is it a non sequitur or non starter? What's the term for that? Where like there's really nothing outside of like a guy being a completely like like say an asshole, like racist, yes. like you know, like that type of person. Mm. That's obviously a turn on. I know that would be a turn off, off. but yeah, <laughs> you're like that's obviously a turn on. <laughs> no, I said off. You said at first on. No, I said off. I'm positive. I was well, I was trailing we've my got words. It I did not say a turn on. I would never say a turn on. <laughs> um, but that type of thing would be a turn off mm-hmm. <laughs> to you. But like other than that, like is there like something that's like definitely not, definitely would mm-hmm. not? Or you're pretty open to everybody. Yeah, everything, right? like just terrible. Like I don't know, xenophobia, racism, just people that just can't be chill and be yeah kind would be a huge turn off people talking about money too much is a big turn off yeah whether what they have because not to be like oh you can't impress me but just i, I won't go shania twain with it but <laughs> <laughs> i don't like to hear from people what they have yeah. and i don't like if someone is overly cheap like Ooh, twelve dollars for a drink. <laughs> so you don't like one way or the other. What like. is this casino royale? <laughs> I'm like, oh, gross. <laughs> do, have you? Do, uh, are you the type of person that would check, um, like the say the guy pays a tab? Would mm-hmm. you check what he tipped? Maybe, maybe I would because that is. That is probably a turnoff as well, like a bad tipper. Someone who's rude. There also are people who are nice on a date but are exceptionally rude to like wait staff and hostesses or hosts, yeah. you know. Um, so that's pretty. So that's a no go. But in the looks department, there's that. I mean, everybody already knows you like like chubbier guys. Mm-hmm. But like I no... used to be like very very fit. Look, I like the point. Can you out. can you post a picture of your? Can you did. just pop it up? I think it's on episode three. Uh, <laughs> I, posted, I posted an old military. I'm surprised pic. you. I'm surprised you made it all the way to episode three with well, you know. sharing <laughs> sharing the apps do, with the world. I do this for you. <laughs> this. That's true. I'm appreciative yes. of it. Thank you. I think I am. I, this is a lot I of muscle though, you. because our trainer even said that I have the second most pounds of muscle out of all the people that she trains Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of fat that goes goes with it too though a lot of (laughs) huggability that's what i like to call it (laughs) excuse me yeah next time she measures and does like we do that little little machine you can just be like can you measure his pounds and huggability please (laughs) not in pounds just in huggability not in pounds yeah you have 77 Huggabilities. (laughs) Huggabilities. <laughs> we don't like to call it BMI at our house. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh, yes. Uh, there is basically no physical thing that would be a like a non starter. Yeah. Yep. That's what we're going for. So, you, yeah. So, you're a tall yeah. guy, short guy, but as long when as people they're... are like, oh, they're not six foot or oh, their like, hair is thinning, I'm just like, oh, that's good to me. <laughs> Five five and balding. Hello. <laughs> as long as they're cool. Hello, new boyfriend. Uh alpha male, alpha male, beta male, like mm. you're more of an alpha male. Sexually, yeah. I Sexually. wish that I weren't that way, but yeah. probably. Yeah. But it, I mean not an alpha male as in like a, a jock, like mm-hmm. like that's just picking on everybody, but more like a guy that will order two appetizers for the table and doesn't care what anybody else thinks. Yes. They don't have <laughs> That's to our be... alpha male. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to be an in-game leader per se. <laughs> they don't have to run the squad, but <laughs> I, I, do, I do like a, a man who knows how to order. Food. Yeah. yeah. Takes charge. Yeah. 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 You, on the other hand, I would love to hear about. I feel that you would have... Difficult time finding a woman. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> I appreciate that. If you were on an app, I feel that there would be comparatively, I would be pleased by everyone. I think you would be pleased by very few people. Is that fair to say? Yeah, at this point in my life, yes. Um. Oh, you. Do you not think it was always that way? You think just now? No, I mean, maybe. I guess maybe always that way. I don't know. I, I would. I would probably. No, I'm just saying. As I get older, maybe I'm just more 
like I wouldn't want to put in the effort. Like I'd be like more nitpicky on like, oh, I can already tell this person's going to be like <laughs> just wants to be like really like artsy and do everything. And I'm just like and I know I won't mesh with that. Like, I, oh, I don't want to go to a festival, honey. <laughs> That's not what I do. Not what I do. Like immediately, if like my snap is this, I'm like, all right, I'm out. (laughs) Later. Yeah. No. You won't even snap. Yeah. But you don't put it past. And and every guy was probably looking at looking at me and calling bullshit. And and I 100 percent agree with them. Is that don't put it past a single guy that hasn't got laid in a while because. If it says, oh, what's your snap? I'd immediately create a snap. <laughs> like if I haven't got laid in six months, I'm like, I have Snapchat. I'll, I'll Mr. Do it. Mr. Psych is taken. Yeah. It's Mr. Psych 1687. <laughs> God damn yes. it. <laughs> so yeah, I um I don't I don't know. I don't know how how I would be in a single situation. I'd probably be at a lot of strip clubs, honestly. I love strip clubs. Mm. It's like one of my favorite things in the world. I love uh, yeah. uh I love everything about them. Uh, just, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big strip club guy. So I'd probably like, it, it depends on the situation. If you and the kids are gone and out of my life, then I'm like Nicolas Cage leaving Las Vegas. I'm gone. I'm gone off this earth. Um, if, you know, if you guys are obviously, if it's like a, like I say, we split up and it's, you know, everybody's just happy. You're happy. I'm happy. That type mm-hmm. of thing. Um I'd probably start on the apps. I would go to the gym and get like extremely fit. Like I wouldn't even get on an app for like three or four months until I was like, you know, really showing signs of like, oh, okay, well this 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 guy kind of knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's um, got some pecs. He's yeah, bulging. Yeah, and then I, I would I would probably because I'm old school. I would still try to do like kind of the wine and dine, and you know, go out to a nice meal and mm-hmm. and talk and. I, in general, I don't think I, I'm like a creepy guy, but I think every single. Do you want to go out sometime? Because the wine and dine is <laughs> doing it for me. <laughs> Let's get back together. <laughs> oh, you're saying I could score you back after we split up? <laughs> oh, trust me. If we split up, I know exactly how to get you back. It wouldn't even be. It, it, Jesus Christ. It would be the easiest thing in the world. It wouldn't even be funny. Like. It wouldn't be a challenge. I know exactly what to do. Just go to Whataburger every day. Yeah. All I would have to do is just go to Waffle House and be like, I just, you know, I'm just going to go to Waffle House and like maybe eat a 3000 calorie meal. It's like, oh my God, it's so filling. I'm and just so depressed. I, I I'm so depressed. And I think I, I it's, you know, I just getting so fat. And then you'd be like, so what are you doing afterwards? Do you want to, uh, do you want to, um, you know, come back to my place? What's and- up after this counseling session? And, you know, you seem stressed. I should, like, I should take care of that. Give you a back rub. Is that a full belly? I see. Yeah. yeah, no, I know. But back to like, I'm not, like, I don't consider myself like, a, but all guys can be creepy. We've all said, all guys have said stupid things and like, it's just a moment in your life. You should never f- like, I, I like, you should never feel just like girls do stupid shit, but guys can just like say and do stupid and creepy mm-hmm. stuff. But it's just out of like, sometimes we're just thinking with other parts of our body and mm-hmm. we realize it a day later, an hour later, a minute later, whatever it is. And it just, you know, and it happens. It happens. So mm-hmm. I would, I would hope that I, I like, I wouldn't be like that, but again, never underestimate somebody that hasn't had sex <laughs> in yeah. months. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's it's a thing less for us mm-hmm. I, not, I mean for girls is that the same thing like if you haven't had sex in three months are you gonna like inappropriately like go out and like just start grabbing a guy's junk in a bar and be like hey come home with me no, or is it not like that i think it's different i think it's different for girls in what way for some girls that's a good question uh, like um um different like you're built different or different as a, you, you just don't do it because you'd be looked at different. Does that make sense? Maybe there's a lot of societal ish that's kind of built in there. Yeah. Um, But I've been in strip clubs mm-hmm. with male customers that were a thousand times better behaved than male strip clubs with female customers yeah. women are ridiculous with male strippers are all over them are groping them yeah are like throwing themselves down and like taking off their own clothes and things that would not fly yeah uh 
When yeah. I look over there, you don't have to look over there. I'm just checking to make sure everything's still recording and everything. You okay. can still talk to me because <laughs> the camera's not on me when I'm looking over there. <laughs> um, yeah, you have a funny thing with because, uh, you know, obviously you worked as a dancer and then but you also worked as a waitress um, in like a fancy Las Vegas like resort um yeah, uh, what you might call it, like like a trendy restaurant yeah. bar, and the wh- what was the difference between the customers? I and I remember you talking yes. to me about the, the difference between customers at this place, and then the customers at uh, a strip club in Las Vegas. There was a huge difference in manners, and it might or might not surprise everyone to learn that the strip club customers were respectful and appreciative and tipped well and were nice to the girls and the customers in this super high-end cocktail lounge sushi bar people paying $500 tabs all night long for food and drinks were ridiculous groping girls coming up behind you while you had a full tray of food and like credit carding you basically under your Uh, uniform grabbing asses like grabbing them by the pussy full on it was uh, so those guys were i mean that that's your like typical guy that goes to vegas they like that's what can be terrible about Vegas is, expected, oh, what yeah. happens here stays here. I deserve to have like, you know, I deserve this. I deserve to have a weekend I'll never forget. But the subtext is like it's at someone else's expense. How many guys want to cheat on their significant others when they go to Vegas? Like a percentage wise, because you've worked in like a lot of fields out there uh, and that is the America's playground. Um, how many percentage, just give me a percentage of like, what do you think legitimately the amount of guys that, that, because I mean, I, I just remember you tell me stories of like the, like in a, in the club, you'd be sitting on a guy's lap and oh, I love my fiance so much and blah, blah, blah. And they're going all the stories or the show pictures of the kids. And then three minutes later, it's. Here's my room key. Mm. I'm at Treasure Island, room 1604. Don't, yeah, but don't you get it? Like, this is my last chance. Like, yeah. This is my last weekend. Yeah. Like, so what, what, give me a percentage. Like, how many good guys are out there? <laughs> I think my numbers are skewed because most of the guys I ever talked to probably were in a strip club. But they have manners. Yeah, they had manners. How many guys go to Vegas and want to cheat? 60%? That's fair. Do you think that's fair? I think that's fair. I don't Oh, but, trust me, I have friends that I know that have went there that that I mean, I could just tell they get four beers in them, five beers and they're mm-hmm. like they're I mean, they're ready to they're rock, like on you know. The prowl. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that say they won't and and some of them won't, but like you get enough beers in them, and if the right girl comes up to them, then mm. it's just it's. We had friends that lived there that weren't even visiting there that we kind of would be like, yeah, I think like if, yeah, if that guy got the Who, chance, like names. he probably would. No. <laughs> no, but is that unfair to guys? Because how many girls go there and are trying to have an affair? How many girls do we know that would? I Cheat. think the numbers low. Do you think it's, it's just, more of a guy thing? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's more of a guy thing, and maybe I'm just uh, uh, um, trashing my You're own kind. Sexist yeah. mother's um, What? I don't know. Do you think? Do you think it's sixty percent of girls go there that would cheat? No, no, I don't. What would it take for you to cheat if you flew to Vegas right now? I don't think there's anything that could get me to cheat on yeah? you. Yeah, I really don't. Is there a um, a scenario where like a famous guy like it, okay is there a scenario where you would call me and be like can I yeah <laughs> there is <laughs> <laughs> but would it be for a normal guy or would it be for only like a celebrity probably only like a celebrity yeah or like um, <laughs> competitive eater or <laughs> <laughs> it's a celebrity in your world I'll let that pass <laughs> Like if Joey Chestnut or somebody I was like. Just gonna say. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say. I uh, love it. Um, yeah. 
what would it take for you to cheat on me in Vegas? A nice rack. <laughs> 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 you know what? That's disgusting. Yourself. How dare you? How dare you? Um, nah, I'm not the cheating kind. Uh, but it, that's not a high and mighty thing. Uh, because a lot of guys will say that. It's um, mm-hmm. nah. I just I like my life too much, and I and I love you too much. Uh, there is with an understanding. Like if you like, if you're like, hey, if you meet Kathy Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'd still, I'd still tap that <laughs> Kathy Ireland. That's right. You know, that's our Gabby Reese or something like that. You know, yeah. you like a, they're all they're fifty two right now, but oh, that's my you know, bring me you in. like a woman at the top of her game. I like a woman at the top of her game that conquered the world that had a line of sheets at Walmart or Kmart. You know, yeah, yeah, that's that's my type of girl. God, I, yes. I, 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 a I would, merchandiser. Yeah, I would call you. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't cheat. Um. Yeah, it's just yeah, I wouldn't. And and a, a a lot of it is also like when you think of the aftermath. If does that make sense? Like I always think of Bert Kreischer talking about he had like a moment of clarity, being in bed with his wife and his girls and his dogs, and he was like, "This is perfect. I I will never mess this up." And yeah, he just had that conversation with them. That's probably true. Once you once you love your life so much. That's probably what it is. It's like mm-hmm. once you, you you just know that hey, it could be ruined by this mm-hmm. act. So something not that worthwhile. Yeah, could I've like had, explode. Yeah, exactly. Everything very worthwhile. And I think it's an age thing. Like once I I mean once you've had sex enough, it's uh the next like nobody could, <laughs> nobody could honestly nobody could me you know yeah i can swear on this i like i don't know why i like nobody could like fuck me like you if that makes sense there's plenty of people out there that could but but what i'm saying is like just as good Mm -hmm. so like like who who in the world like is gonna like what i risk all that for i guess that's the way i look at it like but i but i I have a flash of like who's listening to this like uh, some yeah. poor family members. Nobody, nobody's like, listening to this. Like, nobody's oh, listening to this. Don't worry. Um, so I look at it like that. It's like, you know, you better be getting nothing at home, like absolutely mm-hmm. nothing, and just have the worst family life I in order to do cheat. You know, like feel there just are some situations of horrible communication where I feel for people and for whatever reason, like they're trying to stay in it until their kids are 18 or whatever they're doing. I still don't think that's a reason to like. It's no, it's not a reason. Nothing's a reason. Go behind someone's no, back. but but you but understand it. I have it. a lot of sympathy. Like I, you get understand it. I have it. A lot of sympathy yeah, for that. and that's the same thing with me. I do understand it, and I don't think it's like means everybody is a bad person. Mm-hmm. But if you if you've exhausted everything in a relationship and just nothing's going right, and like because I because people love sex, and if you're not getting sex and you don't think there's consequences afterwards, or not that you don't think there's consequences, it's just you don't care if things fall apart, mm-hmm. then yeah, that person's gonna cheat. Yeah. I mean, and especially if they meet just like a super hot girl, they're dancing at a club in Vegas, and the and the girl's like, oh, let's go back to my room. Yeah. I had a chance to cheat on my spring break. Really? Yep. With this girl, I still remember her name. His name was Aaron. And no, I mean, there's tons of girls named Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron's probably listening yeah. right now. <laughs> he was so cute. I he mean, was that the was the one. <laughs> um, uh, what's up, Daisy? You getting up? No. There She's just, the story is making her uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I just remember, she, uh, I'm always hesitant. I've given too much information, but this was fucking 25, almost 30 years ago. From Vermont. She had like she just gotten down to the Bahamas. She had uh uh you know like probably day one she got her hair braided like in like the you know for like, some reason I thought you were gonna say Carrie Russell curls. I don't oh, know why I thought you were gonna say <laughs> I love me some Carrie Russell curls. <laughs> I know you put that on. I will cheat on you with <laughs> any Carrie Russell hair out there. Um, so. Yeah, she just got to like you know when you go on the ba- beach and they braid your hair mm-hmm. like so she's fresh like. James Franco spring breakers, God. <laughs> you know, that all there. What a mess. And I had a high school sweetheart. I was a senior. She was a sophomore. Um, still friends to her this day. And 
Yeah, I didn't. I I, I never did because the girl wanted to take a shower with me. And I yeah, know I didn't. It's I look the back dream. Now, it's a dream. It was a dream. And, and then, you know, you look back now and it's like, you'll never be stay together with your high school sweetheart. It's like, I mean, there's there's a very, very small chance. Yeah. So I look back now, I was like, man, I could have had a lot of fun in the Bahamas. But then I also look back and I'm like, well, I was a nice guy. I was responsible. Yeah. And I. Uh, Shows your integrity. Yeah. You love to see it. Yeah. And I was kind of, uh, that was the trip I got robbed at Knife Point in my hotel room. <laughs> I know. That's yep. a mental story. I know. I know the friend who left the door unlocked and put that you in that situation. That motherfucker. We're still friends as well. Still friends to this day. Yeah. I had a, my, um. My, my, because that was a day we stayed at this. Uh, I don't even know if the hotel exists in the Bahamas anymore. It's called the British Colonial. It was right down in like the downtown area where they had like the flea markets and stuff, and every cruise ship parked like right next to the hotel. So the, the beach and shit, it was just, it was like, it was. It was horrible, but we all paid for it ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't like our parents were paying for it and anything. But all the friends that that their parents were paying for it were like a mile down the beach at at the all inclusive resort. So mm-hmm. they had all the bands, uh, the yellow, you know, the yellow bands or whatever that showed they stay at the resort where they can eat and drink for free and stuff mm-hmm. like that. <clears throat> so our hotel was so like old and decrepit that like you, it wasn't even. At that point, it wasn't even a hotel that had the cards that slid in the door, like where they can give you like four keys to the room. Mm. It actually had a key. <laughs> like he <laughs> stuck it in. Like I remember going to Chicago and I was like 10. And even at that point, there was like the credit card, like cards, you know, you slid in the door. <laughs> this one, nope. Still I've, a key. I've only known credit cards. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had the key in my pocket because we only had one. And then my buddy... <clears throat> when when he left the room in the morning when we're you know still passed out mm-hmm. like nine in the morning or whatever mm-hmm. he put the he put the chain or you know the the, the flip lock that flips you know that mm-hmm. that that he just put it in the door so the door didn't shut all the way and that's when the guy came into my room and i woke up to him digging in my back pocket <clears throat> excuse me trying to get my wallet out and he pulled out the knife and I got, yeah, yeah 600 bucks. I was the only one that didn't bring traveler's checks. <laughs> it's was, all cash. What did, did your like mom have to wire you money? What no, my girlfriend's mother didn't the most. Aww. Yep. She was a sweetheart. My girlfriend, I wish I could call her out right now. Be, my girlfriend's mother was like the sweetest lady in the yeah. world. Yep. And, I got uh, to meet her once. And she was yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, she was great. So she wired me some money and then somebody else did. And then a dude from a crosstown rival high school that you know their whole group was there and they just won in a casino he just won in a casino like two thousand bucks or whatever and he threw some money and that day it got around to everybody that Mm -hmm. i i got robbed in my hotel room people were buying me drinks i went a whole day without spending money and then the next day between my girlfriend's mom wiring money Mm -hmm. yeah and that's another thing i would have been the biggest dick in the world if i would have cheated on my girlfriend after her mom money you know if you came home and were like yeah, it was really nice of you, Mrs. M. Yeah. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not together anymore. Because yeah, exactly. Because going to take a shower with me. <laughs> and her hair was freshly braided. So, like, I mean, You're doing a great if you were in my me. situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so like, the, so I went a whole day without spending money. But, like, everybody paid everything. For me. Like, You're the guy that got robbed. Here, have Aww. a drink and everything like that. So, yeah, I could have nice. definitely got laid that night. I kind of feel coming. like those are different times. Because I feel like. If you fast, if you were to fast forward like ten or twenty years, people would be like, "Oh, you got robbed! Like, what an idiot, <laughs> dummy! You left your door open. Lock your door." Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I just uh, yeah. So I so the dude from the Crosstown Rival High School, they he like gave me two hundred bucks, you know, or out or whatever really like that. Nice. Yeah, because literally I had zero money, zero. Like he took everything out of my wallet. Yeah. Every I had six hundred bucks, and at that time that could get you through. A week in the Bahamas, yeah. like you know, the hotel room was already paid for and everything. And that stinks. Yeah, but but it's kind of a sweet story in the end. Yeah, it worked yeah. out. Everyone you know? pulled together. Everyone pulled together. The day later, I had eight hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, yeah. I Classic. went a day without spending money and then ended up with 200 bucks more the next Aww. day. All to have a Rambo knife, you know, shoved in my face Jeez. as I was laying in bed. That was the thing. He wanted me to put the covers over my head, like as he was leaving. And I remember, I remember vividly like ripping them down. I'm like, no, no. You know, because I thought like he's this guy's going to put the covers over my head and just start stabbing me, you know, like Dude, yeah. and he's trying to put I remember him putting pillows like he didn't want he didn't want me to watch watch him rifle through the room for the next like 10 seconds and then go out the door. Mm-hmm. He wanted me to like not know when he left. So I didn't know when to get up, I'm assuming, and like yeah. and call the cops. Uh, I didn't call the cops. I just ran down the lobby, like looking and I'm like, oh, I just got robbed in my room, yeah. you know? And then I went to my buddy, like the, my roommate was in a different uh, room and I went in there. I'm like, guys, I just got fucking robbed in the room. And like, shut up, shut up. And I had taken my wallet. I threw it at him. I'm like, there's no fucking money in there. I just got robbed at knife point in my room. Insane. You know? Yeah. It was crazy. Come I'm, to find out you gambled the $600 yeah, away. I wish. <laughs> I'm a better gambler than that. Bro. I did get accused of that a couple of times, <laughs> but I mean. I, when did I gamble from mm-hmm. like nine in the morning to nine thirty in the morning? Like in that thirty yeah. minutes that I didn't think we didn't. There was there definitely wasn't a casino in our hotel. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm sure the Bahamian police were right on top of that. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yes. Like oh, <laughs> a dumb spring breaker got left his door oh. open and got robbed. I'm like all right. Well, it's no wonder that you don't want to travel anywhere, <laughs> Mr. Say. I've traveled around the world. I'm putting the pieces yeah. together. Yeah, I've traveled around the world. So, yes, <laughs> I agree. Sometimes I don't want to go to uh, 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 certain places. But, yeah, sooner or later I will. Um, what Did you do senior spring break? No. Uh-uh. You didn't? No. I'm looking at myself in the camera, and I slouch a lot. Do you slouch? I might yeah. be slouching, I look too. like an oompa loompa. <clears throat> um, no. You didn't go senior spring break? No, nothing like no. that? Not a class trip or nothing? No, we didn't even have a class trip. I think we might have gone to the, like, Louvre. No. terrible, <laughs> the not super nice amusement park um, that was, like, an hour away. I won't say wow. where it was or what it was, yeah. For, like, a half a day, like, senior thing, but it wasn't like that. I feel like you were quite posh. Yeah. Yeah, pretty posh. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. I feel like you grew up on a golf course and oh, you're just a loser. What a loser. <laughs> I thought <laughs> well, what a loser. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not judgy, but what over. a loser. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um uh, I cool. feel like I don't think that we have ever talked about me dancing very much uh before. On here or on between the podcast me and you? or anywhere. Really? Yeah, on any platform. I don't think you've definitely admitted to dancing and being a dancer. Mm, I think not like in a YouTube video. Not like admitted, but I just don't think I've ever talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you have some stories. I do. Definitely stories. I do. What's a little bit funny, not to backtrack too much, but um. What's funny about you bringing up the comparison between the dancing and the cocktail waitressing is how desperately I wanted to be done dancing (laughs) and how fed up I was and truly, and I feel so embarrassed and bad about this, probably 10 days I made it in the cocktail waitressing (laughs) job (laughs) to like quit (laughs) because how awful, how embarrassing, what a fool. Because why? Tell why. Because I went from like a thousand bucks a night at least being treated with respect, um, just myriad other freedoms. To some bro from Columbus yelling at you because his tuna tartare yep. was bad for yep. a $20 tip. Yep. <laughs> barely, barely clearing yeah. $100, exhausted by the end of the night, yeah. walking three times as much as I ever Some dude <laughs> snapping and whistling at you and just telling you that yeah, his his uh, caviar was uh, yep. not to his liking. Bitching and moaning. Because daddy paid for uh, mm-hmm. his trip out to Vegas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he, by God, he deserved to uh, yeah. <laughs> s- 
stick fingers up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do. Rem- yeah, I, I do. I, I vividly really remember that. And I told you because I've worked in a, in a, in a <clears> different <throat> world than you my whole life. And I've, there's always been bosses, a chain of command and mm. thing like things like that. And I know what that's like. And I still remember telling you because you dancers are those. You guys are independent contractors, mm. right? You're your own boss. You don't want to. There's the amount of nights where we were just like hanging out and you're like, oh, I'm supposed to work tonight. And then it's like. No, we're having fun. I'm not going to go in. Like, that Absurd. happened a lot. That happened a lot. It's bad lot. how often that happened. So when you went, to, when you wanted to go, and I wasn't going to tell you no, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm not like that. But I I knew in my head, and I kind of just told you, I'm like, you're about to have a boss. You're about to have a clock in, clock out. Mm-hmm. You're about to have all that. A schedule you can't change. A schedule you can't change. Certainly not like and the yeah, same it was about day. It was about 10 days, and you're just like, oop. Nope. <laughs> no siri Bobsky. Nope. I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> so bad. I feel so embarrassed of how it went down, but that's true. It was cush and I had no idea how cushy it was. Yeah. I danced all the way through college secretly, danced all the way through grad school, like paid for everything yeah. on a ridiculously flexible schedule. You were the <laughs> the actual stripper that they talk about that paid her way through yes. school. Like you I don't have a student loan. Sometimes not even say that I was in school because guys would just be like, "Yeah, whatever, I'm, you're all in school." <laughs> be like, <clears throat> "Sir, I'm about to graduate with my master's." <laughs> I don't have a student loan payment. <laughs> I don't have a student loan payment. That's funny. <laughs> I just paid off my condo. <laughs> I don't need your lip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's mm, so good. Good stuff. Did Sex you... work, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Were you... Uh, <clears throat> you were never ashamed of it. I mean, it, like... You know, not obviously not to get your parents involved in like this type of stuff, but your parents were like even cool with it. They drove you mm-hmm. to get your first license mm-hmm. or everything. I mean, they were open and on I it. You know, think like a- they've like expressed that they were really proud that I was doing everything for myself, had everything paid off, didn't have any debt, like was able to not take out loans. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do you want to tell the story about you? Um, uh, Getting into the different college and not knowing that you didn't have like a college fund set up for you. No, <laughs> it's not like <laughs> it's not oh, a bad story. story. Yeah, it's not. A I bad. did get into Georgetown though yeah. for college, and I was really like it was a grueling series of interviews and just all these different things you had to meet with different alums of georgetown and it was like mm-hmm. difficult and i was so happy as a to small get town in. girl you were yeah. like so happy to get in <laughs> and then after you got in after you got the letter and everything mm-hmm. there was a we can't afford to send you to <laughs> georgetown <laughs> it wasn't like it couldn't have been afforded but it just it would have been all on me as it should be when you pick to go to college, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you picked a state school. <laughs> I picked a state school that I had a scholarship to. Yeah. 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 Well, you did good. I mean, you paid for everything. Like, it, it, was, it wasn't a full ride, obviously, because you had to pay for some Yeah, stuff, right? it wasn't a full ride. It was like half. Nice. Um, but yeah. No, you did good. I did well. Thank you. <laughs> I think I think it's funny. You bring that up sometimes. And I think that you imagine me having like a split, like a sliding doors life where I go off in two different directions. That might be a Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> movie reference that you don't get. <laughs> oh, was it Gwyneth is sliding doors? Movie? I don't get it. <laughs> How does that work? Uh, <laughs> is that a movie with Gwyneth Paltrow? It's a like Gwyneth Paltrow movie oh. where like her life goes in two different directions. Did you hear she ate bread during pandemic? What? Yeah. Was it difficult? Oh, it was a thing on on Twitter the other day, <laughs> like BuzzFeed or one of those websites wrote an article. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow broke down and ate bread during the pandemic. And then I obviously everybody has got to be fucking, oh, I eat bread too. Where's my story or whatever? And I'm like, oh. you're not fucking famous. It's a dumb story to begin with, but it's even dumber that you're complaining that you don't have a story written yes. about you, you dumb fucking twitter person with five thousand followers with the blue check mark they're like i didn't eat two i'm just like well go make 
what was a Romeo and Juliet movie she made? <laughs> Shakespeare in love. love. Just go make Shakespeare in love, and people will write a, mo- a fucking get an story Oscar about you. And then idiot. we would love to write a yeah, story. About I you. hate. I hate when people do that when they quote tweet and it's like, and, and they're mad about this dumb website writing a dumb story, which is obviously a dumb story. Like, mm-hmm. but they're just reporting on somebody famous that like broke their diet. Like, what other like bullshit story don't you want written? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just. Just set, just accept the fact that there's probably a hundred thousand people that want to know what Gwyneth Paltrow ate during, yeah. <laughs> you know, make Shakespeare in love, and a hundred thousand people want to know what you <laughs> ate during quarantine. Honestly, poor Gwyneth Paltrow, she gets shit on so much, but just because she was way ahead of the game in blogging, and yeah, and people are gonna s- shit on me now too for my <laughs> adoration of Gwyneth Paltrow. Fuck them, who cares? Just uh, these blonde women just can't <laughs> be treated. She has a thing, and I don't know if it was on Howard Stern or whatnot, but she talks about like a girl needs to blow her man or something like that. Yeah, I'm positive yeah, it was her. I remember she was like, she's a good "You just girl. need to blow your man when he comes home from work or something." It was just something mm-hmm. like like very. I don't even want to say non-feminist. That's very feminist. And I'm she opposite. blows her man. I stand her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, I like. I think of like the whole feminism thing is like you just do whatever the fuck you want. Like, mm-hmm. so if she, if that's what she wants to do, she mm-hmm. wants to take care of her man and blow her man or whatever. She's not. She's obviously a power. The power in the relationship. Mm-hmm. She's makes a shit ton of money. She's a high powered actress. Mm-hmm. Like you can't tell her what to do. And if mm-hmm. that's what she's gonna do and stuff like that, that to me that's feminism. And I could be completely no, wrong and speaking out right, but that's, just do what you want. That's, that's, that's third way. Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel. That's how I consider myself. Yeah. Yeah. Dolly Parton feminism. Dolly Parton is so awesome. I know. She is so awesome. She doesn't like the term feminist. Yeah. She doesn't associate with it but there are you know millions of women who are empowered and emboldened by yeah what she brought about and no i I, I 100 percent agree showed people she could be yeah she's awesome a lot of those women are awesome that that do that um that are not afraid to just have other women look down on them for mm-hmm. what they do or showing a boob here or mm-hmm. doing whatever or working in the sex industry. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't, how do you explain it? Like, wh- do you, do you have to represent the whole female <laughs> like species? Do you know what I mean? Cause me as a, mm-hmm. as a, as a dude, especially a white dude, like I don't represent anybody. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like nobody looks at me and judges all white dudes on me. I mm-hmm. mean, but somebody will look at a girl or even like a person of color. And if they do something wrong, they blame that whole species on mm-hmm. that one action. If that's what I mean, like mm-hmm. if you do something, you turn down a guy or you show your boobs and it's, mm-hmm. oh, girls are such God, sluts. What's, all these sluts are doing only fans yeah. now. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you, all of a sudden the whole, <clears throat> the whole, the whole, uh, um, gender is on your shoulders mm-hmm. i never and i guess that's what they talk about like privilege of just being like a white that dude is what privilege right? is. that i don't have the whole <laughs> exactly. i don't have the whole the whole you male the species on, on my yeah. shoulders of like hey if i do something stupid you know what i mean they don't go around and be like oh all middle-aged white dudes are mm. stupid it's just, another, it's just a penny in the fountain <laughs> yeah they just look at me and like oh Plunk mr psych is stupid you know what i mean like so that yeah, that's kind of like a, a a privilege i guess that that, that, that comes is, along yeah. you know? see there you go i'm evolving you are you're evolving mm-hmm. that's exactly what privilege is yeah, yeah. Figured and it all much out. Much more. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. we're done here. We're today, done here. We figured folks. it out. We went from stripping to working in restaurants to <laughs> white privilege. Okay, go back to dating. We didn't finish this. Mm. Oh, you want to go all the way back? To we're like... circling all the way back okay. to what's happening. Would You're you have? Gone. I'm, I'm gone. Dating. Would you have a one night stand? Yes. Yeah, I always wanted to have a one night stand, and I never could make it happen when I was in college. You it's couldn't make shy. a one night stand happen. I was. This is. I met early with this guy named Facebook. Siegfried, and he wouldn't do it. And then his partner Roy wouldn't also sleep with me. So I just don't know what it was. <laughs> 
Like, what kind of guys were these? I don't get it. They were tiger wranglers. <laughs> first and okay, foremost. so you tried to have a one night stand in college and it just never worked out. I was. Like, Do you want to say his name? Like, did you try him to? on Facebook? You were poking him on Facebook. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't pan out because that, <laughs> because that was signal was so but obvious. But this was Facebook before Facebook. This like you you this were the start when, of Facebook. Like you were the Zuckerberg you, era. You had to be have an edu in college. You had edu. to have an edu to even yeah. have Facebook. So you're like Facebook OG. Yeah. You made me get Facebook back in the yes, day. I like made you yeah, yeah. So you're I'm Facebook in OG? my early 30s. It's fine, everyone. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> Um, I'm not Zuckerberg. <laughs> okay, so okay, so back to dating. You would definitely have a one night stand. Yes, definitely. Would you? Would you have a one night stand? <laughs> Come on, yeah, it's stupid. Yes, of yes. course. Yeah, there's nothing wrong yes, with a one night stand. God, it's stupid. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I would get judged less f- from it than you, because yeah. then somebody would have a one night stand with you and be like, "Oh, I can't marry her. She's not." Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she gave it up on the yeah. first night. I didn't. I had an ex girlfriend. Think. That- okay, do you think? people realistically still feel that way i honestly feel like if i met a guy let's say 30s also or like early 40s oh when he slept with you on the first night I that he would judge you by it? no he wouldn't gave yeah, it you're up. Right. he'd be like holy shit <laughs> this girl just <laughs> fucked me on the first date i'm gonna put a ring on it boys i'm in love <laughs> <laughs> so long boys she, i found her <laughs> she went down on me <laughs> yeah no i agree i agree yeah you're right yeah there's probably I'm moving in <laughs> i'm gonna ask her if i can move in uh the, honestly the only thing i would i would obviously care about is the kids and who you're bringing around them that would that would be it like you know it'd have to be somebody with my my type of uh um uh, uh, mentality or beliefs if that makes sense mm-hmm. like i wouldn't you want, remind yeah. me of that yeah yeah like that's gonna be written out. You, <laughs> you know who did that, that is uh philip seymour hoffman i remember oh, them talking yeah. about after he passed away it was like in his will about where his kids had to live oh. like in a city like maybe san francisco or I, if you look it up it was something like he had a very he was a very progressive dude yeah um and it was like he wanted he did not want his kids or whatever raised a certain way mm-hmm. and stuff like that or in a certain area so yeah um you know i'm kind of along that lines where i just like i wouldn't i just i care about them so much i wouldn't want like like just somebody that was just focused on you and not them if that makes sense mm-hmm. but then i like i don't worry about that because i know that like if i was gone i don't think you would pick a guy that wasn't focused on, you know wouldn't. what i mean like yeah. yeah they would have to you 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 go towards more of the dilfs than just like the single guys yes. that want to, you know, impress yes. you and stuff like that. Like, if you saw a dad in the park, you would immediately want to be with him. Or am I wrong on that? Like over, no, like no, you're you're right. I would yeah. I would go I would go more for a dilf. You'd go more for a dilf. Mm-hmm. It'd be, I'm sure it would be complicated to meet someone like for you having kids. I don't know. Do you think? I don't know. I think you could. I, I mean, know. I think you could meet somebody. Wait, are you saying it would be easy for me to meet someone? <laughs> no, it would be difficult. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's what I meant. It would be very, very difficult. You should never try. I don't know. You you insinuated that it wouldn't be no, too tough. No, very hard. I don't, I wouldn't, don't even put the effort in. It's like Olympic style training in order to I do it. it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I trust your judgment. I feel that you would like pick someone with a caring heart like someone that would be kind and like nice to the kids yeah and blow you obviously oh of course no she does all that and she's she's caring yeah yeah she's just waiting in the wings yeah yeah she's yeah no she's yeah she's probably sleeping right now Um, (laughs) oh no oh no i mean she doesn't exist yeah I mean, what? Uh, I mean, she will be. Russell. Yeah, she will be sweet and caring. Yeah, and she will be you know, lame. <laughs> not just kidding. So do you remember that old? Lame. Do you remember the old joke? Is like, if you got, if I died and you got remarried, would you let your new girl use my golf clubs? <laughs> Guys, like, absolutely not. <laughs> She's left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Carrie, Carrie Russell can get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember, uh, what is it? Parks and Rec, when the guy's trying to calm down, he has to think of three things that... Watermelon martinis. 
No, yeah, it's water. Carrie Russell's hair. Exposed brick. <laughs> Exposed brick, watermelon, watermelon martinis, Carrie Russell's hair. And he keeps repeating them all <laughs> over and over because those are the three things that calm them down. That's me. So That's you. Minus the watermelon the martinis because I love some exposed brick. I know. Yeah. I, know I love you do. some exposed brick. You dated a guy uh, years, not a year, years ago, but before me. Yeah. And he was like a New York hotshot, like elevator to his apartment. To his like walkout. Yeah. And the first thing I asked, like, did he have exposed brick? (laughs) He did. I don't want to, I don't care about anything about him. Like, what was he like? How big was his dick? Like, none of that. It's like, like, after he got off the elevator, was there, like, exposed brick? (laughs) Was it overlooking New York City, exposed brick? Is that? The balcony, like, like, looked down on Central Park. (laughs) Oh, my God. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. I mean, (laughs) did you? Because I would have. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Ooh, I love me some exposed brick. Ditto. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I beat, I beat him out. Yes, sir. Yeah. In fact, you did. Look at that. You should get petties. Yeah, no. Tomorrow. Probably not. Sunday. Tomorrow. Maybe on Sunday. We're going out tomorrow with some friends. Yeah. Indeed, we are. Do you feel as you're getting older that it's? Do you care? Like, I think about this. Like, I always think about, like, our friends. Because we have, like, a decent amount of friends in different groups and stuff like that. Like, I feel bad when I don't see them for a while. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you're the introvert. So, do you ever, like, does that even register with you? Because I'm the type of person, like, if, if, like, if somebody texts me, I make sure that I, like, Mm -hmm. immediately text them back. And the only time I don't text people back right away is when I look at the text and something's going on and then I just forget about the text. Like, you know, it has to be simultaneous. Yeah, and then someone's yelling. Yeah, yeah, or I'm drunk or something like that. Like, (laughs) do you do you find, like, do you want less friends now? Do you want more friends? Like, how does it work, like, in your mind? I just have guilt for how that I don't give enough attention if that makes sense to my friends like yeah I don't I don't know like a friend will call me and I'll be like oh I haven't called them they're always calling me I just feel awful about it or like I don't know. you're not a reacher that outer. was a poor example but I'm not a reacher outer at all I always have people on my mind and then I feel I'm horrible at expressing like how much I care for friends or how much i like want to spend time with them yeah and they reach out to me and i'm like no i love you too i i should have reached out to you yeah just feel like a big jerk and sometimes yeah i notice you get surprised when people like reach out or give you a big hug or whatever Mm. and you're like oh i didn't know yeah we just had that happen i saw somebody i hadn't seen in months and uh got a huge hug and like they genuinely just seem to like touch to see me like we're getting emotional and I had told you about it and I was like I can't I didn't expect that welcome like I can't believe that that person felt that much and you were just kind of like yeah people like you you don't think people (laughs) like you but they do yeah (laughs) I was like yeah I don't think anyone likes me (laughs) (laughs) yeah no I mean uh I get it I get it especially being an introvert and stuff like that um I it's just it's so hard to like schedule things and maybe people out and the, if they've made it this far on the podcast, they'll they'll understand or they'll maybe leave a comment about um, it. You know, it's just hard to coordinate things, especially if people have kids. Mm-hmm. So I always have this saying that like when somebody comes up to me with a conspiracy, you know, I hate conspiracy theories like that's my thing. I fucking hate conspiracy mm-hmm. theories. Everything about them is stupid. Um it just I, I'm just not a fan of them. I don't and in the way I try to explain to people why certain conspiracy theories are virtually impossible to happen, even mm-hmm. with all the evidence they provide. Right. Like, you know, I pick any of them. I was like, the amount of people that would have that would have to be on the same team and coordinated to do this, whatever you're saying, is in the thousands, thousands of people mm-hmm. need to coordinate, you know, f- Let's use 9 11 because that's a big one. Thousands of people would have to coordinate of faking people dying in each plane. They have to be fake people in the planes because they say it wasn't a plane. You know, like Mm -hmm. it has to, all this stuff has to, like, uh, um, you know, come together via thousands of people and nobody says anything, right? And Mm -hmm. and it all comes together perfectly, right? Everybody stays on the same page. Everybody stays on the same page. And I go, 
Take four of your friends older than 30 and try to schedule brunch with them <laughs> and find out how fucking difficult that is. Four friends. Oh, just all it takes. Four friends. Try to schedule brunch just one Saturday mm -hmm. and it will take you 15 weeks to get everybody on the same <laughs> schedule and figure out what's and the best day. And then someone will cancel. And then somebody will cancel at the very end. But yet... All these, these thousands of conspiracy theories out there that, that would take hundreds and thousands of people to, to complete all these. All, everybody being on the same page on the same day and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those all run smoothly. Like, get the fuck out of here. That is like, to me, that is just like the ultimate. Like, you can't even, if you, over 30 years old, you cannot schedule brunch with four or more people uh, like that. It, it takes so yeah. much work to do. Ain't so. not wrong. No, I'm 100% right. You've just lost our last <laughs> viewer. <laughs> yeah, he's probably They're some like, big conspiracy theorist. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> Maybe that one, but not Vampires every conspiracy theory. Vampires did kill theory. Abraham Lincoln, and they tried to hide it. No, what about the Illuminati? <laughs> yeah, the Illuminati did <laughs> Mr. Sykes, an uh, idiot. Whatever. I mean, yeah, whatever. People believe what they want to believe in, but I'm just telling you, when a big group of people try to do something, it doesn't get accomplished, yeah. and it's been that way for centuries. You cannot. It's, You're not wrong. I yeah. think there. I think there are things that we don't that are inexplicable, or there could be things. I don't know. UFOs, maybe that we're not getting. Yeah, but that's the not full that, oh, information that's not a conspiracy. On. That's no, just that's not. A conspiracy. That's just like, hey, do they exist or do yeah, they not exist? That's just yeah. like, hey, is there something going on that maybe we don't have the clearance to get all the yeah. details about? <clears throat> yeah, no, I get that. Extraterrestrially yeah. only. <laughs> I've seen. I but but my I my anger against them because I've seen conspiracy theories like melt. The brains of like mm -hmm. people that I know and love, friends mm -hmm. and family, where they just get so caught up into them, and I and, and I just look at them completely like completely unreasonable, and they're unreasonable. I'm just like, yes. what? Like you, you don't understand anything about life and how it works mm -hmm. and how like just one simple question, just or you know, or one one simple fact, just. Mm -hmm disproves everything they're saying but they just keep going and going and their brain and, it, and that's what it does it just it melts their brain mm -hmm. so that's like why i really really dislike them but again just it's a simple fact that most conspiracies mm -hmm. require mega coordination and m massive amounts of people to be on the same page mm -hmm. and it just doesn't exist you can't get massive amount of people on the same page it's a that's not it's against point. human yeah it's yeah. against the human nature you cannot get you can't even yeah. get three people to answer back on a group text yes, let alone exactly. show up at the appropriate yeah, yeah, time yeah. at the appropriate yeah. place so all this communication the story yeah. all this communication over the thousand people coordinating this thing and nothing is intercepted <laughs> like you know nothing mm -hmm. the united states government nobody nothing. later on their deathbed was like I, I just have, want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I just want to tell you. Or, or there's no cocktail napkin found. Like, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. Like, yep. Yeah. All. So how do they communicate? How do those thousand people communicate to, to, yep. to accomplish what they're going to accomplish? You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's you're all. You're preaching to the choir. I know. I'm, I'm, on I'm board. just, yeah, I'm on a soapbox, but I no, just. No, you're, uh, you're preaching generally, though. Somebody it, might get it, your message. Nah, yeah, nobody will get my message. They, the they figured world. out what they figured out, but uh, there's no point. There's no point of thinking about all that shit. You're just you're just going down a rabbit hole, and you're just gonna make your life worse. And you're just gonna, you know. Whatever. You should just focus on setting up your Tinder profile for and have sex. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> have sex. Just in case drink, you leave eat, me, just have it ready. <laughs> be a good person. I mean, it's uh, like yeah, like you just like. But mm -hmm. I understand other people want to do stuff but in my life it's just be a good person fuck eat good food eat fuck. good food drink fit vine <laughs> your priorities are in order and you barely have any sugar in your alcohol so <laughs> <laughs> win win go. win i commend you yeah uh, well. well on that note <laughs> yes you ready to go to bed i mean no i could talk to you all night what sir. i could yeah I could talk to you all night too. You should go um, to People have tolerated. Yeah, this is kind of a rambling podcast, mm -mm. but whatever. This is a rambling one. It was nice though. Yeah. We hit on some good points. Yeah. One last round trip back to dating. How quick until you have sex? You said you would have a one night stand, but say you like the guy and would oh. you would you make him wait or? Oh, you wait. Like how quick? Like 
would I be like, yeah, that appetizer was good. We don't need to order Andre's. Like, <laughs> oh, so you're done with the minutes? Oh, I was. About? Okay, so I already know that. So you're just day one, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> not, so when I said, no how quick could you what? have sex with a guy? You were thinking minutes into the date, <laughs> not days or weeks. <laughs> oh, how long does it take you to sleep with someone? Oh, um, like oh, probably just past the appetizer. <laughs> just past the appetizer. <laughs> At TGI Fridays, forty you got, minutes. You got so hyped when I took you to TGI Fridays when we first met. Yes, that was like a fancy restaurant to you. Gosh. And we got it comped because our friend knew the manager. Whatever. Yes, you were so hyped. You could have done cartwheels. You're like, we're going I to TGI Fridays. Loved TGI Fridays. That's how easy it was. Nobody hate me. Stop I, all it. I had to do was take her to TGI Fridays. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You had to lay the groundwork. That was like the third date. You had, you had to come in there with the humor, the movie references, being a nice dude. All easy. Stop it. <laughs> and then it was TGI. All Fridays. All easy enough to fake if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Throw a couple of movie lines at her, make her laugh, and then be like, what do ever? you want? <laughs> do you want Stop Guy Fieri it. appetizers at TJ That's Fridays? That's humiliating. I'm very, very cultured, but yes, I do love me some TJ Fridays. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yep. Um, how soon would you sleep with someone? Yeah, immediately. There's that to me. That's yeah. does that's not a big deal. Yeah, if you want to have sex, you just have sex. It's not a big deal, and I don't think anyone judges you. Like when you're grown, I don't think anyone judges. Yeah, you. I don't even think for twenty year olds, anyone's judging them necessarily. I don't know. No, I don't think so either. And actually, here let's we'll we'll, hang, we'll just a couple more minutes because I want to ask you about this. Um, do you do you see because it. it as as humans grow older, like boys and girls, um, they become more sexual. Is that right? Like, uh, not become more sexual, but like are more free. Like, do you see mm-hmm. in any creators that you follow for the over the years that might have been a little bit more like yes. when they were younger, and now they're doing something a little bit yes, more risque? I do, and I don't want to say who. No, don't. You don't have to say who. Yes, I totally do. And do you think that's or just someone more- was just like completely buttoned up? No anything and then you kind of get to like the mesh shirts and you're yeah. just like okay i see you starting to feel yourself yeah and now do you think that's just a like say because i'm assuming it's more, more the girls mm-hmm. side of the house um it do you think they're it's just as you get older as a woman you just start to realize your sexuality and you're just like i don't i don't care if somebody sees my cleavage mm-hmm. or i don't care if i'm wearing a mesh shirt and they're they're a little bit more shamed when they're younger like i can't do this i don't know. like mm-hmm. you know cuz that's that's part of our society we tell young girls that they have to you know yeah. do not sleep with anybody do not, not cuz we treat them like they're they're sluts if they do yes. you know not everyone is fed that message but it's pretty that there are so many places in society that you can get that message even if you come from a family that's like oh love your body love yourself you know yeah explore yourself you still can go out to school and go you know to a youth group or wherever you go and still get that message like you're a slut if you do anything don't be a hoe bag. Yeah, <laughs> it's a universal message. So, but you, but as you get older, you just just don't give a fuck about that anymore. Is that what these girls? Do you think that's what it is? Like, I you're just like you're you're into your sexuality, and you're like fuck fuck this. Yeah. I'm gonna wear. It. I bet you it's it's a. I bet you it's a mixed bag of like understanding yourself better, gaining confidence, yeah. developing like your personal style. Yeah, and kind of growing into your sexuality do you like seeing when those those yeah they, they, yeah no. i love it yeah, i cool. love my i love myself more and more i'm yeah. more comfortable in my skin yeah um more into my sexuality like yeah. it's, it's a younger people that call stuff. you it's that your camera just went off again we made it that far it's the younger people that call you, uh, like, 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 call you names, like, oh, slow, and stuff like that, because oh, I sure. think they're not into their whole. Yeah, it's a different, it's a whole different generation. Yeah. All right. Well, I have more to talk about it's that, but right. one of the cameras just uh, yeah. ran out of the card, so we'll we'll pick up the next podcast, yes. right? Because I have to a, I actually have a question about, uh, um, uh, like, a, 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 there's a NSFW, uh, like. Uh, ASMR artist that mm-hmm. hangs out with a like a really big time safe for work ASMR mm-hmm. artist and 
how they hang out together. And I remember how it made you feel like it was so cool that it was accepted in mm-hmm. her community or whatever. Um, but we'll talk about that next time yeah. because uh, yeah, but that can be kind of alienating yeah. uh, to be like a not safe for work creator because yeah. a lot of safe for work creators aren't, aren't down with that. Are you just not? Yeah. Know, but right when here. you see like an actual the biggest creator hanging out like because it's all her fans that are all like Mm -hmm. you why can't you be more like her and you're a horrible person and she's the best person Mm -hmm. and then you're like well she's hanging out with her in her personal life so they must not be that big a different like Mm -hmm. you know type of people like that and i always think that's interesting how fans think of it one way but the actual creators is like it's not that big a deal Mm -hmm. it's just one or the other yeah the actual creator probably doesn't care yeah it doesn't care yeah that's interesting all right we gotta say good night okay uh, um thank you so much for watching you guys rambling but fun podcast we had some revelations today yes and uh leave a comment with a question please and we'll go through questions next time and we love you guys you're awesome yes completely Mm -hmm. all right good night good night good podcast baby good podcast all right let's get to bed